Hey guys, welcome to 3.4 Concavity and the Second Derivative. In this lesson, we're going to be analyzing functions and their concavity and see how it relates to the, to the first derivative and the second derivative. So, what does it mean to have a concave up function? A function that's concave up looks something like this. If you want an example of concave up, think of a cup. An example of a concave down function is something like this. Concave down, you could also think of a frown. Right? Okay. So, concave up, which means that the graph has a U type of shape. Concave down, the graph has a downwards U type of shape. Now, how does this relate to the first derivative and the second derivative? because we haven't talked too much about applications of second derivative. We've done second derivatives, but we don't know what they mean. Well, first of all, f is a function. What does the first derivative mean? The first derivative means the slope of f, or you can say the rate of change of f. So that's first derivative. What is second derivative in regards to f prime and f? Well, the second derivative can be can be exp can be really described as the slope of f prime. Notice it doesn't have f alone; it's f prime. Well, f prime is already the slope of f, so are we saying the slope of the slope of f? Well, we are kind of that is what it is. I mean, that is pretty much what we're saying, but. Another way to say this is the rate of change of f prime. Okay, so if f prime represents a rate, then f double prime represents the rate of the rate. So we're going to be analyzing how f prime changes. And what does f prime mean? f prime means slope. So we're going to find how the slope changes, not just f changing. Now we're going to find how f prime changes. So let me go back to my calculator activity that I've done before. I have a function that you guys may find very familiar. But this time I'm, I'm looking at concavity. In other words, concave down functions look like this. And then concave up functions look like that, where they're pointing up and then down and then up. So let me go ahead and slide x. And then you guys can see, if you look at the, at the text above, it says concave down, concave down, and then at some point, I'm still concave down, but at some point here, I'm concave up. And what just happened? Somewhere here, I switched concavity. Concave up, concave down. Concave down, concave up, and then concave up forever. Now the point at which the graph changes concavity is called a point of inflection. When f changes concavity, it is called a point of inflection. or a poi, point of inflection, poi for short. So that still doesn't kind of explain to us how concavity relates to the first derivative. So I'm going to go back to that very first activity that we did together in class and in the video. This blue line represents the derivative. Okay the derivative because that's a slope, that is a tangent line. But notice that the derivative does not stay the same value. Do you see how the derivative changes? The derivative changes as I slide x, it goes from positive to negative, which is a maximum, and then a negative to positive, which is a minimum. So is the derivative increasing or decreasing as I'm sliding it down, I mean to the right? 
the derivative is decreasing. Look at the slopes. They're getting, they're getting smaller. The slopes are getting smaller, and then it becomes negative. And then at some point, the slope stops to decrease, and it goes back to increasing slopes. Notice that I say increasing slopes, not the slope increase, not the slope positive. I want you guys to ignore what it says here. I'm not doing first derivative. I'm trying to analyze how the slope is changing. The slope is the slope now becomes positive, positive, more positive, more positive, and after some point it becomes less positive, less positive, less positive, and then positive, 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 and then very, very positive. So the point where the slope is changing from increasing to decreasing is the very same point at where the graph is changing its concavity. So right here is where it changes concavity because the slope is increasing and then, I'm sorry, the slope is decreasing. Notice how it's positive, getting negative, 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 and then it's increasing and then it's going to start to decrease in a bit. It's increasing slope right now and then decreasing slope. You see how it's getting smaller and then back to increasing slope and then forever increasing. So these points right here, here, and somewhere here are the points at which the derivative is increasing and then decreasing then back to increasing, decreasing. The graph of f is concave upward on an interval if f prime is increasing. For example, at this point, my derivative is negative. And then it becomes less negative, and then it becomes zero, and then it becomes positive, and then more positive, which means concave up. So concave up means f prime is increasing, not positive, increasing concave down f okay the graph of concave down on an interval if f prime is decreasing for example positive slope less positive zero negative more negative so when the slope is decreasing I have a concave down test for concavity let f be the function whose second derivative exists, which means twice differentiable. You're going to be seeing a lot of that term in your uh, AP exam. This means twice differentiable, which means you can take the derivative twice. So that means the second derivative exists. If f double prime is greater than 0, or in other words, if the second derivative is positive, then f is concave up. If f prime, if I'm sorry, if the second derivative is negative, then the, the graph of f is concave down. One way to abbreviate con concave is by writing cc up, cc down, and this is perfectly acceptable at the AP exam readings. They definitely don't have, they definitely don't mind you guys putting that. A point of inflection, I had said an point of inflection occurs when the graph changes its concavity. For example, right here, I'm concave down, and now I become concave up. At this point is my point of inflection. So a function f has a point of inflection if f double prime is equal to 0, or if f double prime is equal to undefined and very important and f double prime changes from positive to negative and from negative to positive so it's not it's not enough to have a second derivative equal to 0 or undefined like in critical numbers in order for it to be a point of inflection the f double prime must change signs, kind of like in max and mins. So we're going to go ahead and finish off the rest of the lesson in another video.